All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Daniel Packard, who is actually uh, just south of me here in Mexico. How are you doing, Daniel? I'm doing really well. It's a pleasure to be here on uh, Sales Pop. And now when I hear your infectious energy, I partly know why you chose Sales pop because you kind of pop, John. Uh, All right. Are you are you originally from the UK? No, I'm not. I'm originally from Ireland. Um, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I made I that mistake okay. twice now, and it's like a cardinal sin. It's like it, 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 it really is. It really is. It's kind I of repent. unforgivable, but you know, it's no, okay. No, <laughs> as an ignorant American and the history of your countries. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. anyway. Uh, no, we are we we all get along these days. So uh, all we'll, right. Well, we'll still, skip, uh, I, I apologize for the yeah, discussion, I mean, but when I saw the name of your show, Sales Pop, I just thought, oh, this is going to be good. But also yeah. brought back this memory um, of when I was a kid. You know, there were these sugary cereals, and anytime you add the word pop to something, it just yeah. makes it better. I'm sure that's it why does. it shows it. And there was this sugar cereal in the U.S. called, well, Corn Pops. Right. Now, if it was called corn balls, it wouldn't have sold. It was called corn pops. And like, who doesn't want that? And I always wanted corn pops. But I, I grew up in one of these families that didn't have the sugar cereals. So my wow. parents thinking that it was smart to not have the sugar cereals like Fruity Pebbles and Fruit Loops and Corn Pops thought, we'll get Cheerios because Cheerios were all grain and low yeah. sugar. But it's like, you can't keep a kid from sugar. So of course right. they gave me the Cheerios, but then they let, gave me access to the sugar bowl. So I'm just sitting there mainlining my own sugar. <laughs> if they just given me the sugar pops, the corn pops, probably medium sugar, but yeah. I'm sitting there just dousing it with, with my own sugar. I'm surprised I don't have diabetes. Right yeah, now. no, okay, I know. Right? I know, I know. They, they do try parents. Yeah, I remember mine when they used to buy, you know, like, you know, natural yogurt. And uh, I would just go to the hot chocolate <laughs> tin. The yeah. Cadbury's hot chocolate tin and dump a load of chocolate in to try and turn it into chocolate yogurt. So, yeah. yeah. yeah anyway, no, I must get an intro before sugar. we before we digress too much here. I got to introduce Daniel, and Daniel is a UC Berkeley mechanical engineer who struggled with anxiety, procrastination, perfectionism, people pleasing, and low confidence. Wow, that's a trifecta. After spending, uh, no, it's not, that's that's more than a trifecta. That's one, two, three, four, five, whatever. A, a, trifecta is when you have five. Um, after spending 10 years and over $100,000 to, to get better, he had a sad realization that all the money and time got him the ability to manage what held him back, but never to be fully true of it. So you uh, trained in engineering and solving complex problems. You started your own research company with your CEO of Full Liberation Technology to see if it is possible to reverse engineer a way for people to move beyond managing what holds them back and be free of it. Wow. So, Daniel, um, I think when I read out the uh, the list of things, you know, anxiety, I think massive anxiety problem, you know, in the world. Uh, I think just so many people suffer from anxiety and um, perfectionism. True. Perfectionism is kind of a, a protect. It's a self-defense mechanism because you never create anything that's perfect. So if you're constantly striving to perfection, you're not actually really achieving or delivering anything and you've got to got to get out of jail clause there or card because you go oh no but it's not it's not perfect people pleasing obviously in low confidence so tell me daniel i mean this is such a fascinating story mechanical engineer suffering from a lot of these issues how did you make the connection to sort of go i, I can I, I can i can bring my engineering mind to this issue well first issues? of all thank you for the intro uh the, the, I just want to be clear with your audience. You mentioned that I started my own company to see if it was possible to reverse engineer a way to be free of it. And I just want to g give away that we did. It took eight years and a million dollars of research, but we did. We developed a six-week online program uh, such that if, yeah, you have, we called the Funky Five, uh, anxiety, procrastination, people-pleasing, perfectionism, and low confidence, which can also be caring what people think of you, fear of failure, uh, overthinking, and self-doubt. And the reason is I want to be really clear what we do because it's innovative mm -hmm. and it's what your audience wants. But it, it, if, if I don't explain what the value is, you know, that, well, this is about sales. So it's about value. What we do is very effective, especially for salespeople. And I know this because we work with salespeople. We work with entrepreneurs and leaders. And actually, a month ago, I was working with a salesperson, Alistair, from the UK. I think, mm -hmm. I think that was his given name. 
uh, I know not all people from England are called Alistair, but let's yeah. be honest. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, he came to us and he had anxiety and the procrastination and the perfectionism, you know, and he had done the, the typical routes. He'd gone to coaches and therapists and mm -hmm. retreats, and he had the usual suspects of what we call symptom management, which right. is how to set goals, how to change his mindset. Um, and, you know, but when you only have tips and tools to manage it, it's still there. It's still holding him back now. Like yeah. your audience, he's successful. He knows how to work hard. He can white knuckle it and be successful. But he said, it's holding me back. I'm not making what I could be making. I'm not enjoying it as much because it leads to, you know, the anxiety, you can't enjoy it. So he had heard what we do. He had heard that we only charge people at the end when they're free of it. And he said, let's do it. And so by the end of, it wasn't even the end of six weeks, his procrastination, well, he went from about two hours a day of productivity up to seven hours a day of productivity. Mm -hmm. He went from stalling 90 minutes a day down to about seven minutes a day. His anxiety was down about 80%. His perfectionism wow. He just didn't care anymore. But most importantly, and this is what he told me, he said, not only am I making more money, but I'm enjoying it more. Right. Because when these patterns, they don't just cost you money. They cost you happiness because it, it doesn't feel good when you're in these patterns. You're mm -hmm. not as productive. You're not in your flow. And so what we're giving people is an and, and just, and just a moment, these things, but yeah. also just be happier, especially yeah. for salespeople. And just, Daniel, all the things that you're referencing here, so these things are often like they're so deep seated, you know, they're so rooted. You know, maybe they even come back from child, from your background and then all the influence you've had. So they're very, very embedded in us. So um, so this is it's quite the thing to take that on. It is. And people, when they hear what we do, they're like, you can't you can't get rid of this stuff in six weeks. And I we when we. We understand the skepticism. You know, there's a lot of stuff out there that over promises on, and under delivers. And what we're doing is innovative. And at any time mm -hmm. in the beginning, people are skeptical. So, yeah, be skeptical. The reason we were able to do it is is my story, the story of my company, which explains the sort of the, the middle of how we got here when other people couldn't and why it was an engineer that did it and not a therapist or a coach. Mm -hmm. And our whole company is about results, measurable results and permanent results. You're in sales, results matters. And results mattered to me because growing up, my dad was a physicist and he told me, he said, you know, anybody can have a theory or an idea. He said, that's the easy part, but you don't know who knows what they're talking about. It's the sure. person that gets results yep. that you know knows what they're talking about and not everybody gets results. And he also let me use his workshop. And so as a kid, I, I felt the joy of inventing and I would make things for the house, Remember that scene in um, uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, all those contraptions that he oh, had? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was me. I would make things, and then they would work, and it was so satisfying. So I go to engineering school to <laughs> better, better man. To I tell you, you're a better man than me. If I had had said? access to that, I probably just would have been trying to figure out how to blow things up. <laughs> well, the reason I liked figuring things out was because I loved getting the best results for the least amount of work. Right. So I'm still lazy at heart, but sometimes when you develop systems, it makes life easier. So I'm, yeah. I'm with you, less work. <laughs> but when you innovate, a good innovation does that. It's more efficient and it's cheaper and it saves you time. Any good invention. Yeah. So I go to engineering school to learn how to properly approach a situation, a complex problem, break it down into simple mechanical understanding, and then you have a theory. Well, that's still useless. Then you build a prototype. And that's still useless because then you got to test it and it never works. Then you get results. And then you're like, okay, I thought this would work, but it doesn't work. And then you refine and you calibrate. This is how you innovate. This is how you create systems. People in sales understand sales systems. So the good news was I had a talent and I was trained to problem solve and make machines work. The problem was I was not told how to make life work. Maybe that was in one of the quantum theory classes I didn't understand, but <laughs> you know, I could make a robot that played ping pong, but I had anxiety and procrastination and people pleasing and perfectionism and low self-confidence. And I was successful, but I knew there was a better, happier, more potent version of me that I wanted to be. And I couldn't access it. So I spent 10 years and a hundred grand going to coaches and therapists and psychologists and retreats and the apps and the books, man. I was, I was all in with the personal development. Every, most people in sales know you work on yourself. 
mm -hmm. helps you with sales. I did that. And after 10 years and a hundred grand, the engineer in me said, let's, let's check the results. And so, they were horrible. John. Yeah, so just, just on that, on that, stuff. Daniel, as you, when you reflected on that, what were the, because lots of people try these things, what was missing? What was missing in all of that? Well, I can tell you now, or I can tell you what we discovered and explain to you what we discovered that's been missing in the entire, what we call the I'll improvement you, industrial. Yeah, I'll let, you, I'll let you continue industry. your story. Go on. And your audience needs to know this because mm -hmm. had I known what we discovered, I wouldn't have spent a hundred grand in 10 years. Right. But this industry sort of hypnotizes us into spending a lot of money and time and settling for just management. They're really good at it. Anyway, I was still doing all this stuff and I just wasn't happy. I was successful, but unfulfilled. I was also knew there was more to me mm -hmm. and I was kind of pissed, you know, and I was pissed. I was like, and I looked up to the heavens, whoever's up there pulling the strings. And I just said like, what do you want from me, man? Like 10 years, hundred grand. I'm trying. This is a test. What do you want from me? And I was being rhetorically pissed off. I didn't expect an answer, but I, sort of got this clarity of that this industry of coaches and therapists and personal development it's well-intentioned people but they don't get great results they don't, they don't get you free of this stuff quickly and measurably generally it's a trillion dollar industry because they're managing symptoms mm. and i saw that i was trained to problem solve and i thought oh i thought i was supposed to work on like you know external things but i said wait a minute i know how to solve problems i'll just see if we can solve this inner problem. And mm -hmm. so I started my, my company, Full of Liberation Technology, to see could we reverse engineer a system, keyword a system, so that people could be free of this stuff measurably and quickly and permanently. And it was eight years, it was a million dollars in research, worked with addicts in South Africa, entrepreneurs in Europe, athletes in the US, all over the world. And at eight years, we finally cracked the code. I was one of the first beneficiaries um, I've been basically free of all of those five. They're just gone. Wow. They're not in my system anymore. No more management. And, and because no anxiety, no people pleasing, it's just gone. Forget the fact that I'm more successful. I'm just happier. I enjoy right, life right. more. And it, it all comes down to that we were engineers trained to problem solve. Mm -hmm. Your average coach, therapist, guru is what we call a learner share. They learn stuff and they share it. Yeah. There's no doesn't mean it's going to solve anything, but w engineers are problem solvers. We're innovators and we're focused on solutions. And, and systematizing. normally engineers and innovators are focused on the physical world. That's all the technology you see. That's mm -hmm. inventors and engineers and problem solvers. It's incredible. But there's no innovation for the inner world. It's the same stuff regurgitated. And we innovated because we wanted to. And I was one of the, an engineer that instead of focusing on like physical technology. I worked on emotional technology. So that's why we pulled this off. And because results matter. Yeah. And when people work with us, you don't pay us up front because we haven't helped you yet. We haven't gotten you a result yet. And so you go through the program and you're measuring every day. You're self-reporting your data. So by the mm -hmm. end of the six weeks, we and you have real self-reported scientific data that what you're struggling with is either significantly down or gone. And that's right. when we get paid. Right. So, and we do that for two reasons. One is people just don't trust that we can do it. So we say, <laughs> fine, we'll lower the risk. Here's the program. You pay us at the end. So we help more people. But also my dad said, results matter, John. And mm -hmm. if we can't get you a result, we're not taking your money. It's, right. it's not right. Other and just, people will trust yeah, me, but not us. Yeah. And just on that, because one of the things you said, you know, is you know, when people go through all these, you know, books and courses and coaches and all of that is, is, you know, a lot of it ends up with, obviously you, you kind of, it falls on you. You have to implement it yourself, obviously, you know, with most things, but I feel like you, you often people will come out of that feeling worse about themselves because the promise was, if I read this book, if I do this thing or whatever, all these things will improve. And then they don't. And then you think, well, it must be me. Instead of saying, well, maybe this is maybe this doesn't work, but it must be me. So, I mean, this is a very different approach. Well, and you're preaching to the choir because I'm going to give, again, the coaches and the therapists and the psychologists, spiritual teachers, benefit of the doubt. Yeah. They're well-intentioned. But when you give people an ineffective product where they fail, 
like I did, I felt broken, something wrong with me. Because when an expert says, oh, just go do this and you fail, you do blame yourself. Yeah. And I did. And your audience does too. And it's doing damage because mm -hmm. they're giving, they're selling products that aren't engineered well. And so we, the reason we only take money at the end is partly results matter, but also we don't want you to try something and fail and feel worse about yourself. <laughs> yeah. Every now and then we have a client go through the program. We have a 90% success rate uh, and a hundred percent success rate if you work with me directly, but every now and then it doesn't work for someone. Not only do we not charge them, but I reach out to them and I say, look, this isn't your fault. This was on us. Mm -hmm. We're the experts and we didn't get the job done. We're going to figure out why, but this is not your fault because I don't want people to feel yeah. worse about. So if you're listening to this and you've tried a lot of stuff and you failed and it hasn't worked, I'm telling you, when I explain to you how simple this is and what engineers figured out, you'll realize this is not your fault. You are not broken. There's nothing wrong with you. It's the experts you trusted didn't set you up for success. It's not what we're doing is too good to be true. It's what the experts have been selling a trillion dollars a year is too ineffective to solve anything quickly for multiple reasons. Mm -hmm. Do you want to hear what those are? I would love to hear what those are. And then I'd love to see you just start telling us because I'm you've, you've sold me on this. Come on. I want to know. I want to know what it is. <laughs> well, I want to educate your audience on why what they've tried in the past hasn't sure. worked so they don't blame themselves and mm -hmm. then understand why what we have developed is worth a try because i understand your audience is skeptical you should be you mm -hmm. don't see every day i see every day clients go through our program and happier and more filled and more joyful but you don't have our data you have your experience and you have an experience of most of the stuff just leaves you in the in this hamster wheel of constant personal development which is expensive so the first thing is is that we wanted to simplify what was yeah. going on? Because when you go out there looking for help, there's one coach teaching mindset. One says breath work. One says jump in this bucket of ice. Another says to <laughs> walk on coals. It's like, wait, is it ice or is it cold, hot, cold? Like, is it my ego or is the ego good thing? Is an anxiety a good thing? I don't know. There's all this misinformation. And as an engineer, you say, if there's all these explanations, not everybody can know what they're talking about. You know, yeah. Newton came up with, basic laws of motion, three laws that A, explain pretty much everything on the planet and have not changed in 300 years because it was simple and he got it. Mm -hmm. And so we said, let's simplify things. So lesson number one, to simplify things, everything that your audience is struggling with, whatever they call it, it has different names, overthinking, self-doubt, procrastination, perfectionism, mm -hmm. anxiety, overwhelm, has all these different names. And we saw you're told, and it feels like you have multiple problems. Right. You don't. You have multiple symptoms of one thing, which is fear. Mm -hmm. That's it. Real simple. A little bit confronting. You could call it anxiety, or you could say you have a high level of fear. You yeah. can call it procrastinating, or you could say you have a fear of starting and finishing things. Mm -hmm. You can call it perfectionism, or you could say you have a fear of making a mistake. You can yeah. call it people pleasing, or you could say you're afraid mm -hmm. people won't like you, or you could call it low confidence or self-doubt, or you could say you're afraid to be your natural, true, authentic self. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot of layers to this, but can you sure. see that if you simplify things, really people are just afraid and it's showing up in these different ways? Yeah, no, I, I think that's such a that's such a profound uh, a profound thing to share because, as you said, uh, you know, we tend to treat the symptoms. You know, if we think we're a procrastinator, we buy a book on procrastination and then we put it off for a week or two <laughs> to read it. <laughs> um, or, as you said, I mean, if you're, uh, yeah, I think it's very profound because otherwise we're going saying, well, I need to learn how to be less of a perfectionist, but also I need to learn to be less anxious. So I need to go here, there, and everywhere. And what you're saying is like at the root of all of these things, it's the same core issue that's at play. And once you identify that, obviously, then you can start to treat the root cause. As opposed to, let's face it, because I mean, if you just, uh, what's a prescription without diagnosis is malpractice, right? Ooh, testify, John. I like that. <laughs> yeah. But as you say it, it makes sense. But look, anytime someone sells you a book or a coaching program on procrastination, there should be an asterisk that says, this is just a symptom, mm -hmm. which is fine if they were transparent. So they're selling you a solution that could never be a solution because it's symptom management. Mm -hmm. If you don't address the fear. Now, the thing with fear is your audience doesn't need me to tell them that fear is an issue, whether whether you see that it's as big of an issue 
as it is, your audience already knows there's fear, doubt, uh, you know, worry. Mm -hmm. But even that, if you go trying to address the fear with coaching, therapy, spirituality, you get overcome the fear, face the fear, change your mindset around the fear, uh, uh, change your story around the fear. Okay. I spent a lot of money on overcoming the fear. So I'd get into these situations. I would use the mindset shifting tools. I would white knuckle it and I would overcome the fear and I would make a little bit of progress. Great. Yay. A little bit of progress. But if you overcome the fear, that's great. But isn't the, is the fear gone, John? No, no, no. no. The fear, it's the fear is for you five it's waiting minutes for you. later. Yeah. <laughs> so another reason. We just looked at this and said, even if you know you're afraid, nothing out there is solving the fear. We look, trust me. And that's what we said. If we could just solve the fear, all the symptoms clear up. Mm. And that's what we saw. So do you want to do you want to understand our understanding of fear that makes it solvable quickly? I absolutely I, I do. And and I do I would just share with people though, is you know, a lot of fear is false evidence appearing real. It's always a great uh, acronym for fear. Are you saying that because you heard that or you believe that? I think I, I, I believe it in, in many ways, too, to be honest, because we, we tend to confirm our fears. OK, so just as a teachable moment, that's one of the theories out there that is helpful to manage the fear, meaning you mm -hmm. feel a fear. And there is some truth that fear can be a bit delusional and amplified mm -hmm. and we can reinforce it. That is true. However. And if you can see and go, okay, this is, I'm overplaying this fear. Mm -hmm. It's not as scary as I thought. You can lower the fear a bit with that understanding. And there's some truth to it. However, has that understanding of fear allowed you to be free of it? No, absolutely not. Right. So that's the problem. <laughs> there's this stuff that sounds, I mean, doesn't it sound good? False <laughs> evidence appearing real. Sounds great. I tried it. Management at so is overcoming the fear. Doesn't that sound good? You feel like Braveheart. I'm going to overcome the fear. Yeah, that's great for five minutes. Yeah, so we were engineers, man. We love efficiency, not stuff that sounds cool, stuff that works well. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we saw was we double checked all the theories. And the main theory is that fear is a problem of the mind. Change your mindset, change your scarcity thinking, uh, the ego, false evidence appearing real. These are all cognitive psychological approaches. Now, mm -hmm. There's truth that the mind can scare you and create doubt. Absolutely. But if it was the root cause, then these approaches would have solved it by now. If you're in the root cause location, you'll get permanent results. But of course, look, look at things. We're still managing this stuff. Anxiety is on the rise. People are more insecure mm -hmm. than ever. And we realize it's because anxiety doesn't start in the mind. Yeah. That's another symptom. Anxiety and fear starts in the body, mm -hmm. then spreads to the mind, which is very different. That's how we're wired. You feel what the body needs to stay alive in the body first, then your mind is a tool to get the body what it needs. You feel hunger in your body first, then your mind senses the hunger, and then the mind tries to get you food. If you're out in the jungle and you hear a sound in the bushes, you feel fear in the body first, throat, chest, heart, stomach, gut, then the mind senses the fear and goes, oh, God, there's a problem. We got to mm -hmm. solve this problem. Now, what we discovered is, and I'll explain to your audience, there's something everybody's doing every day, totally unknowing to themselves that's making their body afraid. So your mind senses the fear, doesn't know why you're afraid. So it starts to make up stuff because it's like, well, mm -hmm. there's a problem. There's got to be a, the problem is you. The problem is your finances. The problem is your relationships. And your mind is looping, trying to solve the imaginary threat. Then once the mind starts saying all the scary negative stuff, it keeps you stuck in a loop of fear. We call it the spin cycle. Yeah. So, yeah, the mind can spin. It can be false, but it is not the root cause. It is a symptom. And that is why all the techniques the audience have tried to quiet the mind, change their mindset, at best, it's management. And that's why you're not free of it. It's not your fault. The expert sent you literally to the wrong effing location. Mm -hmm. If they send you to the wrong place, the smartest, most successful person can't crack the code. And this is right. my theory, John. I live this every day. I was one of the early test cases of our technology. And I woke up about eight years ago and I just felt calm. Mm. At first I thought it was temporary because 
this stuff's never permanent, but one week, one week went by, one month went by, two months. I haven't really felt fear above a two out of 10 for more than five minutes in eight years. Wow. So not only is my body calm, so I don't procrastinate, I don't need things perfect. I, I don't know how to care what people think of me because the fear is gone, but also my mind is just quiet. It's so, I used to have a mind that beat the living crap out of myself on a daily basis. Remember the judges from the Muppets? Do you remember those two guys? That oh yeah, 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 yeah. The two guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had the judges on cocaine. <laughs> I remember my mind used to tell me, not only was I ugly, mm -hmm. but unlovably ugly. Yeah, that's really kind of messed up. But then of course, so now my mind is just quiet. I don't meditate. It's just quiet as a church mouse up there. Not because I'm so enlightened, but I calm the body and then the mind calms down. So, so, so just tell me on, on the, how does your, so you, your mind, you were saying whatever, but how does your body feel? How does your body feel when you, when you start to be able to calm your body? You're just calm. You just calm. And, and I'm just saying, because I think that's probably an experience that not a lot of people really have had or had too much in their lives, or maybe have had fleeting moments of, but generally speaking, if you ask, you know, if you took 10 people off the street and say, how often do you feel totally calm? Not, not in your mind, not just in your mind, but in your body, I, I don't think you'd find very many. You won't. And you're right. It's part of the reason people are so skeptical. They're like, wait a minute, I've never felt this in my life. You're going to get me this in six weeks. But one of the things we track is how many hours per day did you feel perfectly calm? We track that as one of our emotional biomarkers. And we had a woman, she ran a small business, Caitlin, she's from, I think Calgary, it was Vancouver or Calgary. Anyway, she wrote to me about four weeks in and she said, I woke up calm this morning. <laughs> she said, I haven't felt calm since high school. She said, this is incredible. And it's, most people don't even know. And then also we'll enter our comfort zone to avoid the fear. So some people know a version of calm, but mm. you're not really calm. You're just avoiding the thing that makes you afraid. That's even more dangerous. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah, it's called wine. It's well, the alcohol <laughs> industry. People know there is a, a fast track, short term mm -hmm. to be calmer. Is drugs mm -hmm. and alcohol, and it works. It basically really? shuts off oxygen to your brain, and the fear goes down. Uh, but it's not exactly a great life choice because yeah, you have an aggressive yeah. root cause. But pe yeah, uh, people who work with us, they drink a heck of a lot less because they're just <laughs> calm. But also they're happier. And here's how we're able to do it. It's dead simple. There's no magic here. There's no Harry Potter involved. We just realized it was coming from the body. But that's good news because the body is simple and mechanical. Nobody understands the mind yet. There's like a billion neurons and synaptic pathways. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's like deep space. They don't get it. But the body pretty well mapped out. And there's systems. And systems are mechanical. Engineers love systems and mechanical. So we just said... What specifically is the system that's making everybody afraid? And once we ask the right question, you get the right answer. It's really simple. It's so simple, you probably already know it. What's, take out the word fear. Take out the word worry. Take out the word doubt. Take out the word anxiety and just use the word nervous. Mm -hmm. What system in the body do you think is most likely responsible for being out of whack and making everybody feel extra nervous? The endocrine system, the epidermal system, or the, wait for it, Nervous. Nervous system. System. I would yeah. assume the nervous system. And why would you assume it, smart Irish John Golden? Um, because as you just said, you know, if you replace fear with ner your nervousness, you know, nerve, your, you know, the, the nervous system is is controlling that. And the reason you got to that answer, and your audience also did too, is because it's effing obvious. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Think about how much. And because I, I'm because I because I probably don't know what the other two systems actually do, so I took a good guess. No, it's obvious. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Nervous, nervous. Yeah. At the very least, it's a good place to go help people be less afraid. So For think sure. about how much the experts have blown this, and think how much we have been conditioned to not hold them accountable to just basics. You got the whole planet expressing different versions of nervousness and fear, mm -hmm. the violence, the stress, the drugs, all of it. It's this weird, icky, scared feeling underneath. And they, there's a system in the body with the word nervous right <laughs> in there. We know systems can get out of whack and be miscalibrated and make people feel extra nervous. And when there is a system in the body called the nervous system, 
after a hundred years of modern psychology and really bad results, everyone was like, no, nope, it's the mind. No, you guys, it's not. A, anxiety's on the rise, so you're in the wrong place. Mental health professionals, it's not mental health, it's body health, specifically the nervous system. So your audience wasn't taught this. They were sent to the mind. There's a system in the body called the nervous system. The nervous system is your body's mechanical threat response system. If it's healthy, you feel a word called safe. Right. If the nervous system is not taken care of, which I'll explain to you, it hasn't been, you start to think there's a threat and you feel unsafe. When you feel mm -hmm. unsafe, you feel nervous and afraid, which then gives rise to all the symptoms, the overthinking, the self-doubt, the procrastination, the people pleasing, the anxiety. So we saw that every system in the body needs basic maintenance and hygiene. Your teeth need it, sleep, eight hours, drink enough water, food pyramid, exercise. There's basic hygiene for a lot of the systems in the body. And if you know the basic hygiene of each system, each system it sort of takes care of itself. It's one of the beautiful gifts of the human body. We really don't have to do that much. Just take care of it. Mm -hmm. So if you know how to take care of a system, it sort of takes care of itself. However, John, and to your audience, did anybody ever sit you down at any point and say, <laughs> hey, you got another system in your body called the nervous system. And here's the basic hygiene and daily maintenance you need to do every day. And if you don't, eventually, like any system, it's going to start to malfunction and you're going to start to feel afraid. Did you yeah. get a talk like that at any point at all? No. And to be perfectly honest, Daniel, I'm just trying to rack my brains to trying to think of the last time I've heard anybody actually even reference the nervous system. Man, the fact, look, 30 years from now, I hope this is just known knowledge, just like mm -hmm. brushing and flossing is known, just like food pyramid is known. We do not want to protect this technology. We want this in schools so kids know this is what you do. You know, we work with teens because this is so simple and it's not social media. It's that their nervous system, it doesn't, they're not taking care of it. So they feel nervous. The social media makes it worse, but mm -hmm. we work with teens and th their anxiety is gone. Their confidence goes up because they know what to do. So it's so simple. The reason we figured it out is because we were trying to find it and we didn't have legacy thinking. We weren't mm -hmm. regurgitators. We were innovators. So simple. And there's historical precedents for this where people find simple solutions that make life better. Florence Nightingale, mm -hmm. British nurse, 1850s, Crimean War, uh, noticed more soldiers were dying in recovery than on the battlefield. Yep. So she goes to the experts, the doctors and the and the uh, generals saying like, hey, this is kind of a problem. I think she said it much more posh than that. But <laughs> and they because they were experts were like, don't worry about it. This is just war. Don't worry about it. But she did care like I cared because this mm -hmm. is crap results. They're, they're dying in recovery under our care. And she was the one because she just paid attention. She's the one that saw that it was an infection caused by poor hygiene. Again, hygiene, basic mm -hmm. care. So change the bandages, open the windows, move the shoulders away from the toilets, and the death rate dropped by 99%. Not because she was an expert, because she wasn't an expert. Yeah. She was looking for the simple things that the experts missed. But it still took 30 years to catch on. Millions mm. of men died because people reject simple in the beginning. But there's historical precedents where the experts can miss the simple thing that can save people's lives, and we're saving people's emotional lives. And the reason is is because the nervous system is out of whack, not because it's overstimulated or broken. It's because you were not taught basic daily hygiene, how to take care mm -hmm. of it. There's 28 ways, ideally, that you take care of your nervous system. The average person knows of four. So about 30 times a day, you're accidentally doing little tiny things that aren't taking good care of your nervous system. Then eventually that builds up to where your nervous system is fragile and it's not strong and you just feel unsafe in your body and let's see we'll do a quick exercise so i can just show you this yep. with an experience instead of just words because right now it's theoretical okay mm -hmm. so here's what we saw and again just to be clear this isn't theory okay we're the only company in the world there's a billion therapists and coaches sorry a million therapists and coaches on this planet a million 
Not a single one tells you the results they're going to get you. Not a single one measures your results as you go through. And not a single one lets you pay at the end when you're free of it. Mm -hmm. Why do you think they don't back up their results, John? Well, because, uh, well, number one, because they would argue that they don't have control over the outcome because it's down to you. Um, but it's, it is the problem. How often have you seen that? It, it's even in regular medical or anything. How often do you walk away from something thinking that was great and all that, but you don't have a track to run on. You don't have, you don't have a system, as you said, to implement. You just have these ideas or these nice words. Well, usually when people want fast permanent results, they go to an expert who generally has built the system for you. For instance, when you, if you don't take care of your teeth and then you have an infected tooth, you go to the dentist who has a system. They're trained in that system. If you don't take care of your diet and all of a sudden you're having chest pains and a heart attack, you go to a heart expert. They have the tools and the training to bring the system back to health. So part of why what we do is effective Usually people get individual tools. Try this, try that, try this. That's fine for management. But if you want to solve something, you need a, a complete optimized toolkit to get the job done. That's what we spent eight years developing. You don't have to go to this tool and that tool and this tool. Everything's in one place. But also the other important thing you need for a good system, instructions. What do you do? on? When I used to go to these coaches, they'd give me this tool and it was like, good luck. I would try and fail feel worse about myself. So part of the eight years was seeing was laying things out. So it's dead simple. And you pretty much can't fail every day for about 20 minutes. You're given exercises. You know exactly what to do, what to do on what day in what order. There's no guessing. There's no wondering. There's no confusion. You can't fail. That's how we get a 90% success rate. That's how we can back up our results because we've been testing the pejesus out of this to make sure that you have everything you need in one place so you don't fail. Your audience hasn't had that. That's why they yeah. failed. It is not your fault. You were not set up for success. But now I want to do a little exercise so you can understand what we saw. And this is what makes this all possible. We saw a direct mechanical link between air and safety. Let me say that again. We saw a direct mechanical link in the body between care, care. and safety. Meaning the unsafe feeling isn't from your childhood. It's not from society. It's from care daily care and i'll show you what i mean we'll do a little role play here where we're gonna be friends okay right, right. okay yeah i'm talking to you john and i'm talking to your audience okay so just to simplify things let's say we're friends and let's say all of a sudden for reasons which you do not understand all of a sudden i start to treat you like crap i'm unkind to you i'm mean to you i'm critical to you when you're struggling, I'm not empathetic, I judge you. I put everybody else way ahead of you and I put you dead last. When you're struggling, I push you harder. And when you really, really, really need me, I'm not there for you. If I treat you that way over time, poor care, are you gonna feel safe or unsafe? Well, I'm gonna feel unsafe for sure. Yeah, mechanical. Mm -hmm. There's a link between care and if you don't care for something, you break trust. When you mm -hmm. break trust, you don't feel safe and the nervous system feels it. So there's a link between care, trust, and safety, mechanics. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, meaning you, John, and your audience, you are in a relationship with yourself. You are in a friendship with mm -hmm. yourself. Is it fair to say that sometimes you're not always the most loving, caring friend to yourself? <laughs> Yeah, for sure. For sure. I, I think we're probably, it. I think, well, I think, uh, I think we're all, um, I don't speak for and other people, sorry. I do think, yeah, often hard, we're hard on ourselves. We're really hard on yeah. ourselves. You're 100% right. That is the most, of the 28 ways you should be good to yourself, that's the most common one that people know. Yeah, you'll hear it all. Oh, I beat the crap out of myself. I'm too critical. Yeah. I'm too hard. Yeah. That, your audience already knows that one. It's one of the 28, but you know that one. So your audience knows they're hard on themselves. Your audience knows that they're afraid what your audience didn't figure out. And we saw that criticality daily is poor treatment to you. It breaks trust with you and you feel unsafe within yourself. Mm. That's where the fear is coming from. The accumulation of daily acts of unhealth from you to you. It's not your childhood. It's not mm. 
the pressures of life. It's you to you a little bit every day breaks trust with you, leaving you feeling unsafe. Here, I'll give you another one. Here's another and, uh, one. Just, just before you go to the next one, though, it isn't the point of trust. So basically, in essence, you don't you're breaking trust with yourself. You don't even trust yourself. Right. And that's and you, you can see already even from that how how overwhelming that might be within you. You may be unconscious of it, but the fact is you don't trust yourself anymore. That right there. It's mm -hmm. so once you see it through this lens, it's like, holy crap. Yeah, if I treat myself like crap every day, <laughs> I'm not gonna trust me. If I don't yeah. trust me, I'm not gonna feel safe from within. And then, oh my God, of course I'm afraid. Of course yeah. I'm anxious. Of course I'm nervous. Of course, of course, of course. Once you realize it's you, which is confronting and you can't blame your parents anymore, that's the downside. Mm -hmm. But you really <laughs> not blame them. It's you to you. Uh, that's, and here's the down. So here's another quick example. Another thing that people do is deflect compliments. It's common, okay? People know they do it. What they don't know is that it accumulates over time to break trust. So let's say we're friends again, okay? And let's say someone pays you a compliment, okay? And they say, hey, great job. And then I jump in and I go, no. You get that compliment the hell away from them. They do not see them, do not appreciate them. What you will do is you beat the crap out of them when they mess up. Yep. If I treated you that way, do you feel safe or unsafe? No, unsafe for sure. Again, your audience knows they deflect compliments, but they didn't know it was accumulating to make. That's the huge breakthrough. Here's mm. why this matters. The yeah. fear that you feel, the unsafety you feel, and the symptoms of that fear, whatever you call it, overthinking, self-doubt, procrastination, whatever you call it, the root cause is little acts of unhealth that you didn't even know you were doing that have accumulated over time and the nervous system is basically malfunctioning and you feel unsafe from little acts of unhealth accumulating. That's the bad news. And this, if by the you way, don't learn daily it, hygiene of your nervous system, which is what you learn mm -hmm. in the six weeks, you'll continue to neglect your nervous system. You'll continue to feel unsafe and fearful and you'll continue to have the symptoms. You'll never be free of it. You can manage mm -hmm. it. You can white knuckle it, but you're never free of it. That's the mm -hmm. downside. But this is where it all comes together, bringing it home. If the problem, which is fear, is a symptom of little daily acts of unhealth, if we want to turn this around quickly, if we want to solve it, why is it good news to find out that the culprit is just little acts of unhealth every day? Why is that good news? Well, it's good news because that's, that's manageable. That's fixable. That's fixable. We know that if you do little acts of poor dietary health, you gain weight. Okay, that's yes. not false fat appearing real. That's not a fatty <laughs> mindset. Okay, that's not, you just well, it's an accumulation of false, poor false diet fat health. appearing real. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, get a t shirt. Yeah. But the beauty of that is we know that. So if you want to lose weight, you don't need to overcome the fat. You don't need to awaken the skinny person from within. You don't need to vision board. What do you do? You move from little acts of unhealth to little acts of health and your body heals itself. And that's what our program does. In six weeks, you get all the tools that repairs and brings your nervous system back to health. And then you've built a daily habit like brushing and flossing to keep the results moving forward. And here's what you get to feel. At the end of six weeks, you get to feel something that almost nobody gets to feel. Safe. Mm. From the inside out, for no reason, just because you have a healthy nervous system. John, and to your audience, this is a whole new way of looking at happiness. How much better would you be at sales? How much would you, how much happier would you be? How much better of a parent and partner would you be and person, how much better would you be in your life be, in your sales be, if you woke up every morning and your default baseline was you just felt safe and calm? Well, I mean, I think that would be uh, that'd be a remarkable uh, that would be a remarkable feeling to have every day. And uh, and and like you said, I mean, this is this makes so much sense. I just have to go back to the compliments one because it just just out of funny because it's a bit of a cultural thing where I come from is like you know that one we'd have to take and cure the whole country of because it's a cultural thing also in our you know if you compliment somebody in Ireland their immediate uh, reaction is to downplay push back deflect whatever well you're right now just to be clear in the six weeks you don't have to completely relearn all 28 that's <laughs> sure. not doable 
And also it's particularly bad in that part of the world. But trust me, it, when I was in Ireland, I remember I was like, I like complimenting people because now mm -hmm. I have a very healed, happy, joyful heart. Yeah, yeah. So I want to, and you walk up to an Irish person, you'd be like, oh, you were the first person on the moon. And they'd say like, well, the rocket was going there anyway. You know, they just, <laughs> like they can't do it, but trust me, it's a global, it's a global <laughs> thing. It's particularly bad in that part of the world, but you don't have to unlearn that. Trust me, yeah. the program is engineered. You don't have to do a lot. You have to show mm -hmm. again, if you want to lose weight, you just follow the diet. And mm -hmm. if you burn more calories than you, you eat, there's a mechanism in the body that does the heavy lifting. You don't have to understand mm -hmm. fat cells. You don't have to go in there and talk to each fat cell and be like, hey, it's time to let it go. <laughs> you just need to follow the steps. And there's a mechanism that heals in the body. Mm -hmm. Same with our program. If you're thinking, oh, God, I have to learn all. No, we have a 90 percent success rate and we you only pay at the end. If this was difficult and hard, we mm -hmm. wouldn't be this successful. So. Mm -hmm. And by you the way, the other, learn all this, trust yeah, me. the other thing I was going to say to you is it just reminded me because there what you said is it's these, you know, small things that you're doing, like small care things, you know, that obviously accumulate. I had a guy on a couple of years ago who he told me like he he does, he was overweight, really unfit. He said, just sat on the couch, watch TV, drink beer and all that. And one day he just decided, oh, I need to make a change in my life. And he said, I'm going to run a marathon, right? And he's about as far away from being a marathon runner. And so what he did is on day one, he, he got up off the couch and he walked for five minutes. Came home. Day two, he walked for six minutes, whatever. But anyway, over time, you know, and he cut a long story short, a few years later, he's running marathons. But it's the same. It's the same thing. To your point, is like these little, you know, taking these things like small things, and they all kind of accumulate, and over time, you end up in a where you want to be. Yeah, and it, that's just what works. What we're doing, it's not fancy. It's just what works. It's just what the the, the improvement industrial complex doesn't sell things that work. I went to a retreat called "Unlock Your Infinite Potential." Okay, mm -hmm. now that sounds good. Sounds awesome. One problem, there's no lock, John. If there's no lock, you can't unlock it. I don't even need inf infinite potential. I would just not to act like <laughs> Forrest Gump around a girl I like. So they <laughs> sell us on this big shiny stuff that sounds great. But look at what works in the world. Do simple basics consistently. Works for business, works for relationships, yeah. works for goldfish, works for pets. Mm -hmm. It's just... You sell more stuff when you make people think it's complicated and they're the ones that have it. And we were like, no, man, this is really simple. Here you go. Everyone's afraid. It's not in the mind. It's in the body. And there's a system already there called the nervous system. You weren't taught to take care of it. Not your fault. So you didn't. Now that nervous system is malfunctioning and cranking out too much nervousness. Once you're nervous, it creates all these problems. So mm. all you need to know is how to take care of your nervous system, which we teach you. We lay out all the simple steps. We've seen this with people that go from a heart attack to marathons. It's totally doable. It works the physical world. Why not the emotional world? So all of this sounds great. Like if you're paying attention, what I'm saying sounds great. Yeah, but absolutely. Unconsciously, a lot of people aren't ready to let it go. They've had this stuff for so long that they hold on to it. Yeah. Afraid of who will I be? I've had this for so long. It's the familiar misery. I yeah. I, I had a client. Uh, this was three weeks ago, and she you know wrote to me. I found out about your program. I met someone who told said you only charge at the end, and I'm all in. I can't live like this anymore. And on a sales call, she's all in. And then when it got time for her to actually, she was dealing with perfectionism, panic attacks, and low self confidence. She's all in. It gets time for her to start the program and she starts sabotaging, mm. creating all these excuses. Now, fortunately, I know how to talk people out of it. So she did the program and now her panic attacks are gone. Her anxiety is gone. She's happier. Her sales went, I think she doubled her sales in three months oh, wow. because when you're not afraid of the outcome, you're a better salesperson. You just don't yeah. care. And people love that <laughs> confidence. But anyway, yeah. the people that work with us, they're skeptical, but open and they're motivated. You have to be motivated because there's always going to be a bit of fear of letting this stuff go. But if the motivation mm -hmm. is there. So if you're listening to this and you're, you've had that anxiety and you're like, I can manage it, but I would love to wake up every morning looking forward to the day, feeling calm and have an open heart. 
We help people with that every day. We can get you that. Reach out to us. If you have procrastination and you're managing it and it's not stopping you, but it's holding you back and you'd like to be free of it so you can wake mm -hmm. up each morning and spend hours a day focused doing what you want to be doing, creating value, making sales, making sales calls and being proud of yourself and enjoying it. We can get you that in six weeks. Reach out to us. It, perfectionists, you hear it all the time. today, not tomorrow. <laughs> That's just code for you still have it. That's yeah, I'm just saying for the procrastinate, exactly. Reach out today, not tomorrow. Don't put it on a to-do list. <laughs> yeah, and don't, I always tell you, do not follow me on social media because I'm just telling you, take action. Yeah. I'm telling you, we have a six-week program. No risk to try, measurably. And you'll be, oh, can I follow you on social media? No, you can't. What you can do is go to my website. Let's keep things simple. I'm Daniel yep. Packard. Go to danielpackard.com. And there's two options. There's either a, a, a both are a free call with yours truly. So you get to talk to me for free. That's pretty cool. And that's mm -hmm. coming from a guy who used to hate himself. So now I'm <laughs> lucky. Uh, you can either have a free next steps call where you tell me what you're struggling with and where you want to go. And I'll give you some simple, actionable steps that'll move you in the right direction of less fear and more of what you want. Or if you're listening to this being like, I don't want tips. I want the, the six week program. Go to danielpacker.com. There's basic info on the structure, how much it costs, which trust me is way less than you think, considering yeah. you get to be free of this. You'll probably make that back within a few weeks or months from the sales you'll make. Testimonials. Um, and if you're interested in the program, you book a free call with me. You can ask me questions to make sure it's a good fit for you. But also I'm double checking. It's a good fit for you. If I don't think it's going to work, I'm not going to let you do the program. Mm -hmm. A, because we only get paid when you get results, sure. but also we don't want you to try and fail. It's like, it's like, we are not, we don't want to hurt you. So we vet you now, yeah. almost everybody can do it, but I'm protecting people because you've been, I want to say this dicked over <laughs> by a lot of people who have taken advantage of your pain and taken your money and left you holding the bag, mm -hmm. feeling broken. And I've been there and it's horrible and we won't do that. Yeah, also yeah. for low confidence, I get it. You know, anyone listening to this podcast is successful, but that low confidence, caring what people think of you, needing people, people, needing people to see you a certain way, a fear of messing up, it'll show up. It won't stop you, but it'll show up. You won't be as confident, as mm -hmm. open-hearted, but also it's keeping you from your full potential. Yeah, you can't yeah. be afraid and your full potential simultaneously. You can't, yeah, it's possible. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to be fully you, which not only helps in sales, but in your relationships, man, people come into us, the program for anxiety and low confidence for business, because it's just good business to not be afraid. Yeah. And then they're like, oh mm -hmm. my God, my wife and I, have been getting along better than ever because when you're not afraid you open up when you open up connection connection is what we all want so your entire life is better quickly with this program you pick one thing to focus on because we want to get good clean data but yep. you'll see benefits in multiple areas so again low confidence the procrastination the people pleasing perfectionism anxiety if you want to be free of this stuff in six weeks with no risk to try danielpacker.com yeah. To learn more and take Excellent. action for God's sakes. Excellent. Well, listen, thanks so much, Daniel, for, for all of this. Uh, all of Daniel's information will be below this video. So danielpacker.com, but all his contact information will be below here. Um, I think from what you've heard of today, I'd encourage people to go check it out. Um, particularly if you if you feel like these are things that are holding you back. And let's face it, they are for most people. Um, have at least one or two of these. Uh, and the thing is. You don't need to. You don't need to live like this when you have uh, when you have ways of solving it. And here's a fantastic way. So, and as you said, it's uh, it's uh, you only pay when you success. So, I mean, it's uh, I would really encourage you to go do it. It makes complete sense. Um, I don't know, Daniel, if you have anything else to add before we uh, leave. No, but just really from the heart, based on what your audience has tried, it feels like you do have to live like this because the experts are not addressing the root cause, not effectively, not quickly. So it feels like you don't have to live like this sounds good, but based on what's available in the market, when when we start, you do have to live like this. You, mm -hmm. you do because the fear is always there, but you truly don't have to live like this. And I want to give you hope. I don't, I wake up every morning like a kid 
<laughs> so you truly don't have to live like this. If you have the courage and the motivation to change and let it go, we can get you the escape plan. So John is right. You don't have to live like this. And I don't want you to. And we would love to help you live the life you were meant to live. Yeah. And Daniel, you're a great uh, you're a great advertisement for your own program, because if you go back and read like your original bio and where you came from and everything, who you are today is so totally different from that description. So there you go. You're your own own best advert. <laughs> I wish, you know, when they, you know, have ads for diets, there's always the before and after shot. Mm -hmm. uh, I wish to God there was an emotional before and after shot. I mean, you see me now, I don't seem low confidence. I'm not, you know, mm -hmm. I don't strike you as that. But man, 15 years ago, scared to death, unhappy, but there's no before emotional shot. There's no technology mm -hmm. for an emotional photograph. But man, if you could see me before <laughs> and you could see me now, God, I wish I had that. But for now, you can at least just see me now and maybe a little bit of when Harry met Sally, you see my joy and purpose and you're like, I'll have what he's having. So yeah, yeah. I'm like this. This is not cocaine. This is the direct result of me using our own system. So if you, if any, I know for a lot of your European, uh, UK, Irish audience, you're like, he's a little over the top. You don't have to be me, but your yeah, version yeah. of joy and freedom is completely there for you. Yeah, no, it's a great, it, it, it's fantastic. And for those of you under the age of like 30 or 40, Harry Met Sally was a movie. <laughs> uh, thank you for reminding me to know my audience yeah, right. all right listen thanks again daniel thank you for watching and listening and i will see you all again very soon thank you